Episode 26. It's summertime. Welcome back to One Extraordinary Marriage, where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of intimacy. You're here with Elisa DiLorenzo. And Tony DiLorenzo. And tonight we're going to be talking about summertime and how you maintain your intimacy when schedules are different and for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. Um, We're starting to experience that here ourselves. But uh, first, a belated Father's Day wish to all of the dads out there there that listen to our podcast. Um, And a big happy birthday belated birthday to my wonderful and beautiful wife Elisa she turned go ahead we're not going to say how old but I want to thank all of you guys on our Facebook fan page and you can get to us at one extraordinary marriage on Facebook you guys were awesome you guys totally just stepped up to the plate when I asked for um, birthday wishes for Elisa and so appreciate it thank you you guys so it's really not a belated birthday wish for Tony because he actually Sweetheart that he is. Yesterday, we're recording Monday night, and so yesterday, Sunday, Father's Day was also my birthday. Yeah, we just couldn't get, <laughs> after Father's Day and Elisa's birthday and a bunch of other stuff happening, we just couldn't get to the mics last night. Yeah, Abby had a nap and that threw. That threw. Talk about those summertime <laughs> schedules. But um, yeah, no, Tony was a sweetheart. He We had compromised since it was Father's Day and my birthday on the same day, and so he got to go do his bicycle ride first thing in the morning, so he... He, you left what probably five forty five six o'clock six o'clock six o'clock but about five forty five he you know comes and leans over the side of the bed to give me my good morning I'm going on a bicycle ride kiss and he whispers in my ear do you want your present now or do you want to wait and I'm like oh he must really want me to see what my present is if he's <laughs> if I if I'm getting more than just the peck on the cheek to go for a bike ride and so it was very sweet well it was one of those and I knew because I was doing a long you know four and a half five hour ride that. By the time I got back, the kids could have spoiled it. So I was like, well, I better get this in before the kids spoil it. So it was very sweet. It was actually, um, he got me a rash guard uh, shirt for, well, I'll use it for the pool. I probably won't use it for the ocean that much because, yeah, I just don't do the cold weather, water like that. But uh, Well, and I got it because you'd already started using mine. <laughs> so I figured I better get you one of your own, which you got for me for my birthday. Right. So oh, seeing, how cute. Aw. Well, the, the cute part is that I had to go exchange, exchange it, yours. the one that he got for me because it didn't fit properly. And I didn't like the cut of the, the women's shirts. And so I had to get a men's shirt. And the only one that they liked that that I liked that they still had was the identical one to Tony. So I had to call him from the store. The gals in the store were laughing because I call him up and I'm like, do you mind if we have matching shirts? Now we can go surfing together. Are you already promised that surf lesson to Alex? Yeah, then I'll take you afterwards. Oh, well, we'll, we'll see. About <laughs> can't we just go someplace warm and tropical? I'll sit by the we ocean. Can go, we and can do warm and tropical okay. and go surfing too as we go warm uh, and tropical. Uh, yeah. Warm, we need to do that. Yes. You know, clear water. Yes. Yeah, we, we talk about that over the last 13 years of our marriage and have not made that happen. What are you waiting for? I don't know. What are you waiting for? We just haven't made it happen. So anyway, it was a... F- you guys definitely contributed to a wonderful wonderful birthday for me um the birthday wishes that came across from the one community were amazing you know you guys (laughs) I, i don't even have words for it you know whenever we ask for something you just you do it to the highest degree and whether it's participating in the seven days of sex challenge or wishing us a happy birthday um it's just always it's always awesome. And so a big special thank you um, for that. We've got our seven-year-old walking out here and uh, we're just checking on him because he's had a loose tooth. So I'm making sure that it hasn't. Oh, oh, he's good. We got the smile. I know. I see your tooth wiggling. Thank you. We'll see you in the morning. So this is exactly what we're talking about tonight. Um, you know, with it being summertime, our kids, We are not in year-round school, so they are home right now. And aren't they home all the time? (laughs) Well, what I meant was we're not dealing dealing with the school. Are we going to talk about what happened last week, or we just jump? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I got distracted with Alex coming out. Okay. Yes, we can talk about last week because I have some cool stuff I want to talk about. Oh, sure. All right. So uh, I had lunch with some good cycling buddies of mine that I have not seen. 
for the last three years, um, my cycling has been pretty intense. The last three years, I completed what is called here in California, the California Triple Crown, which is doing three 200-mile bike rides uh, over the course of the year. And those 200-mile bike rides you do in one day. Typically, the hour, the time limits are about 18 to 19 hours. Uh, so I have done that the last three years. Mm -hmm. And fortunately for myself, I found a great group of guys and I rode with them a lot over the last three years because I was doing these double centuries with them. And this year I decided not to do them. I've, I've just sort of tired about doing the, the double centuries, the training it takes to do it, to stay up with it. And I had the opportunity to meet with two of them on Thursday for lunch. And it was a blast. It was really fun just to hang out with them again and share what's been going on over the last six months. Hey, it's been even longer since I've seen them. Yeah, I haven't seen them since last summer. And, you know, it was just it was just really fun because I got to talk to them about the seven days of sex challenge and got a, a lot of blush in. <laughs> <laughs> from these. Okay, these guys are also older. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's understandable that you're... But here's the thing, though, too. Larry didn't want to talk about it. And Bob, who is 50, it was really cool. I mean, he was, he was very forthright and upfront, you know, just saying, hey, we're having some of these issues happening in our marriage. Mm -hmm. And so the thing I did do is when I got home, well, actually, when I was still out working and stuff, he gave me a call and just really thanked me for the conversation and just really being passionate about it and and talking about intimacy. And so when I got home, I made it a point just to email him one extraordinary dot com and let them know that, hey, you know, we we are a resource. We we're here helping folks talk about intimacy. And if there's anything that we can do, you know, via our podcast, if you're listening or possibly even picking up stripped down once it's available, I let them know about that. So it was just cool. It was it was a great it was a great lunch just to hang out with some of my old cycling buddies that I haven't seen. What else happened last week? Yeah, th then I got I got a blank going on after that. We um, actually kind of took a break um, after the seven days of sex challenge last week. <laughs> last week, no, we forgot. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, we, our, days, a, our days have been screwed up. Break, but we, it was so it's funny. like we forgot all our days for some reason last week. We were, <laughs> well, <laughs> we were we off. Got, we got to Tuesday, which is Tony's day, and he's like, I'm going to bed, and I was still doing a couple of things on the computer, and, and he hadn't said anything. He hadn't you know, made any kind of overtures or you know, any... Yes, it was the last day for me to initiate. It was initiate. the last day for Tony to initiate, and I'm like, oh, all right, he's going to bed. And so then I'm up for a while because I was doing some other work stuff and time got away from me. And all of a sudden I look at the clock and I'm like, uh oh, I I'm in trouble. And so I go to bed. He is passed out snoring, <sighs> you know, the whole thing. Uh, thanks for that. Well, in case they were wondering. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so he wakes up Wednesday morning and I'm like, honey, I am so sorry. And he's like, sorry for what? Well, actually, no, I take that back. You did not apologize. Or you did not ask me for what, because I said, I'm so sorry. And you were doing something else. So you totally blew me off. And we were actually both home that morning. Or we, we met morning? up or Wednesday. No, it was Wednesday afternoon that we met up here back at the house because the kids were gone and you got off work early or something. And, got it. and so we're in bed and you're like, wow, you know, last day of my days. And I'm like, honey, it's Wednesday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's not Tuesday. It is Wednesday. And so it just like last week, I don't know. I think after the seven days of sex challenge, we were just kind of like, Woo! and so days got all kinds of screwy on us last that is, week. That's but funny. That, that's funny that you mentioned that because hold on. Our good friend, Derek, he wrote me today and um, he was talking about the seven days of sex. And he, he goes, we really enjoyed the challenge, by the way. I intended to post more regularly than I did, but things were pretty hectic. Elisa and I realized, that's his wife, Elisa, and I realized that we have a pretty healthy sex life in our marriage during the challenge. Congratulations, you guys. That's awesome to realize. We also experienced a lot of playfulness and laughter as a week wore on. Ironically, we end up going from sex for seven days straight to no sex for seven days straight. I actually thought that was kind of neat. It helped us recharge the batteries. <laughs> uh, I thought that was great. 
I, and quite honestly, I mean, th- this is the third time that we've done this. And there is there is something to that. You you know, whether you had sex for the seven days or you, you know, it's just putting forth that effort. Mm-hmm. And so it's a matter of once it's over, figuring out what the balance is going to be in your relationship. Right. You know, for some of you, we know that did the challenge. This was more sex than you've had in a long time. Mm-hmm. We know that from the comments that you wrote in. And so coming off of that week, I would anticipate that a lot of you are just renegotiating what your intimacy lifestyle is going to be. Some of you like Derek, and I know that there were other couples that really, you know, as they were going through this challenge, were like, you know what? Things are pretty good for us. Mm -hmm. And I would guess there's still some negotiation there and going, what are we going to do going forward? How are we going to be more deliberate? You know, things are good, but there's always room for improvement. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know that just in how we relate to each other, and we know that there are cycles. And it's how do you keep, uh, how do you keep the the intimacy at the forefront? How do you keep you know God at the center of your marriage so that you you know kind of keep your eyes on the prize and you know where you're going and you're going there together, and you're keeping your spouse right up there at the top, right? You know, and and this is all, you know, this is all negotiations. It's all discussions because life changes. Yeah. You know, where we are at the end of this challenge compared to where we were a year ago. It's completely different. Completely different. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I really encourage those of you that did do the challenge, use these weeks after the challenge to have some great conversation on what you want your intimacy lifestyle to look like. Yeah. Those of you that, you know, keep hearing us talk about it and you couldn't do it for whatever reason or you came in late and said, you know what, I want to do this. You know that you can go to the website. All of the posts are up there, mm-hmm. right? Okay. There's, a, there's, a, we, we made a page specifically for the Seven Days of Sex Challenge, and so it has everything there for you to follow along and, and do it on your own. Don't forget, I mean, Elise and I did this twice before by ourselves, um, and we didn't have support. We didn't know what the heck we were even doing back then. <laughs> we were just doing it. Um, and we learned a lot, so don't feel like you've missed out because you didn't do it during the challenge. Uh, I, I think any time you do this is a great time. Mm-hmm. You know, one thing that Elise and I talked about this time was just where you as women are are in your cycle. You, right. You've discussed this a lot that week about, wow, this is a great time for me because of where I am in my cycle. Absolutely. And you know, I just happen to be one of those women that I know, you know, I've got a 28 day cycle. I know exactly where I am every week in terms of my, um, level of arousal, I guess is the best way to put it. And so it was just the row factor. <laughs> row. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> I guess I, I guess I have a row factor. I didn't know about. <laughs> um, and so this week just happened to be the, you know, it happened to hit on the right week for me. Um, which was yeah, it wasn't planned. It wasn't no. I mean, it was it was completely coincidental because you know we planned the challenge way before. But a lot was learned again in in knowing that it was like wow, okay, having done what we've done over the last year, mm-hmm. really making intimacy a priority and sex a priority every week, we're still learning about that. And so for you, for us to have sex for these seven days. It was like, oh, wow, in this time of my cycle, this is really when I am aroused and this Mm -hmm. is what can happen during this time. And and so we're learning as we go, okay, this is sort of the expectation and understanding of sort of your arousal and what what you're desiring in the bedroom. Right. Because of your cycle. Right. You know, it's kind of crazy how much science actually there is behind well, I think it. I think as you do it more, you under you learn about yourselves more. And oh it's yes. Not a, it's it's not a guessing game. It's not this. Well, is she going to be ready for it? Is she not? I mean, again, the communication is open between us. We we understand that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. But we're still learning as we go. Uh, uh, you know, we're not experts by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to. <laughs> no, what I'm just saying, we're not experts in knowing exactly all this yet oh, about right, ourselves. Yeah. We're, we're learning as we continuously right. go along. I mean, it, it's a, it's a learning process. And it's you know one of those things where I don't know if practice makes perfect, but practice definitely gives you a lot more knowledge. So uh, 
Yeah. yeah. Encourage those of you. And knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. <laughs> um, some of you we know said that you were going to keep up with the challenge. If you are, congratulations. God bless, God and, bless you. And, you know, we'll be looking forward to hearing your stories. Yeah, um, please let us know. We'd love to just keep telling us. Keep, We'd love it. You know, keep it going. And I do have to say that was very sweet of Tony to say that we set up a page for the seven day of sex challenge because really you guys know he's the tech guy. He does all of that stuff. And I just, I appreciate the fact that he gave me a little credit, but I, I give it all back to him because I don't do any of that. Thank None. You. Zero. Um, Thank you. But as we're talking about that and, and the negotiations and the conversations that you're having coming off the sex challenge, it is one of those things where it's summertime. Mm-hmm. And in our house, that means our kids are not going to school. You know, they're playing hard all day. Kids are playing together after dinner, which during the school year, we really, you know, kids come in at dinner time and, and that's it's it. pretty much done. Um, yeah. You know, because they're playing so hard, our daughter is taking more naps, which... You know, she's had a few naps since they got out of school. I was going to say, she's usually just crashing out. I mean, we haven't even really read to her over the last week or so. I mean, that well, that, that's my crash. goal. My well, goal <laughs> my goal every day is to run them so hard that they are ready to crash. Yeah. But we do, you know, it is summer. So we do have, you know, random movie nights mm-hmm. where. Yeah, we're we're a we're, lot. We're a lot more, more lax. Laxed than we are during the school year. We just. It's summertime. Let's let's enjoy it. That's not to say my kids aren't still reading and doing math and writing. All right, we don't. <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> but the the question then becomes: Okay, so you you know, not only do you have the kids at home, most of you, but you're dealing with vacations. You're dealing with people coming to visit you. You're dealing with the fact that during summer schedules are a little less predictable. Mm-hmm. And because yet, of that, well, we're encouraged. You know, here we are. We're encouraging you to make you know, these intimacy lifestyle decisions at a time, you know, seasonally where things are probably the most unpredictable. Yes. And so, you know, the question becomes, how do you navigate, how do you navigate summertime? How do you navigate your, you know, maintaining intimacy as a priority when things aren't, you know, kind of following the status quo? Yeah. It's, you know, especially if you have teenagers, I could only imagine with teenagers being up later, you know, and, and expecting you to be up with them or uh, I have no, you know, it, it's just, it seems like if you have older kids, it would be even more difficult. Even though our kids are, are younger, you know, like Elisa said, we're watching some, doing a lot more family movie nights and that just sort of takes into the time that, Elise and I usually use for our evenings to work on either one or other stuff, you know, with my business, with her business. Or even just spend time together. Or just spend time together. But usually, you know, during the school year, the kids are in bed by 7.30. Mm -hmm. We do our time on the computers or whatever we got to do with phone calls and that. And that's usually an hour and a half or so. So that's 9 o'clock, 9.30, 10. And then we get that time afterwards where now the kids are going to bed at... 8.30, 9 o'clock, and then we're trying to jump on the computers and try to do what we got to do and then still make make our intimacy a priority, which we do. I mean, there are times when we are trying to go, okay, how much do you have? Let's put the timer on. It's this much. You need to be focused. Get it done. Turn them off. And we mess up. Focus translates into, Elisa, don't sit on Facebook. That, that, that's, yes. that's the underlying message there. You guys know how Tony feels about me on Facebook. So I'm just like making sure everybody's clear that when you say focus, you're really saying don't sit on Facebook. No. And I mean, <laughs> I get, I get into that stuff too, where you're just diddle daddling around and it's a waste. Agreed. And, and you, Agreed. you notoriously, I will turn around and you are on Facebook. And that's why I can't, you tell that's me why that I can't post comments when, uh, when we're when supposed to be When you're telling me you have time. things to do. So it, but, it does, it does, it does deteriorate or doesn't deteriorate, but it takes time away from when we should be spending time together. Well, we also run into, you know, fortunately Tony has a pretty flexible schedule. And so there have been lots of times where, you know, for us, we can have those midday rendezvous or mid morning and with everybody being home, (laughs) I'm like, Oh, Hey, we'll see you again in August during the day. 
Um, yeah, that's not happening right that's now. That's not happening. Unless the kids are at the sitters for yeah, a portion of Yeah, I mean, they the still day. get, you know, some playtime with other friends and things like that. But, you know, I would love to hear from you guys what you're doing this summer to make intimacy a priority. Um, we know from the challenge, some of you with teenagers, you guys are creative. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God goodness Mm -hmm. you know i there was the one post about sending the kids to walk the dog and you know or Or the reverse the sort of the reverse babysitting was like buying them tickets to the movie and sending them off because you know you pretty much have about an hour and a half yeah yeah yeah, that was good it wasn't it wasn't like an add-on to that you know something about making out in the car or yeah there were some very creative teenage um solutions there were and you know, if you've got something good, give us a call. Share it with everybody else. You know, the, the number is 858 754 9937. Let us know how you're coping with summer, how you're still managing to make intimacy a priority, how you're still managing. I mean, Tony today, um, was that on one that you posted that? The I Love You Because? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I can't, because we've got so many different things going on, I couldn't remember exactly where it was. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> Good job. Um, but Tony and I do the I love you because. And today it was my smile and the way I make you laugh. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, I have them all saved on my phone. Like, mm. every, you know, if somebody. I, I tend to text them to Elisa more than anything. I, and it was really funny because the other day I said something about the fact that I have all of those saved on my phone. Yeah. I don't even think I know how to save it. Oh, yeah. He's got a smartphone and, you know. <laughs> I don't know how to save it. Smartphone. Um, but those those are those messages that I get. So today he put one on Facebook. You know, I love you because. And so people are reading our love notes to each other. And, you know, even, whether it comes on a text or he calls me and, you know, sometimes I'll just get a voicemail. I love you because of this. Right. You know, that's a way that I know, even though, you know, our schedules are crazy. It's the, I'm thinking about you and I want you to know that. Right. And that's enough to, you know, smooth over some of those, you know, like if you're starting to feel cranky or you're starting to get low because you're tired or, you know, you're listening to the kids bicker for the third time in 15 minutes, you get a little text like that and you're like, Ooh, <laughs> go ahead, kids fight away. Daddy loves me. Yeah. <laughs> So, so note to all you guys, make it a priority this summer to do something like that. It, it, it takes, it just takes a moment of your time. It, it really does. It doesn't take too much thought to just send your wife a little, I love you because, and you know, when you parlay that and put it together with having intimacy and making it intentional and a priority, it's amazing what can happen in your bedroom. Or outside your bedroom, if you so choose to leave your bedroom. Change the scenery. Change the scenery. It's always good. So during this time of summer, I think a lot of us just run up to this sort of, it's we're not on our schedules. Mm -hmm. And so how do we make it happen? And, you know, Elise and I doing this podcast is almost us talking about it to each other as much as we're talking to you because as we're sitting here talking I'm thinking in my head okay we got vacation coming up how does that how does that work and and our vacation is we take a week away we rent a house with my with my folks nonetheless we love them to death and we just have a blast um spending the week with them but you know as we're talking here I'm thinking Okay, how are we going to make that one work? Apparently, there's going to be an emergency kit packed. An emergency kit packed, that, that, yes. That's what we call our... <laughs> our in the car. That's our have sex somewhere else besides the bedroom pack. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very nicely done there. You know, that way, wherever we find ourselves, we usually, yeah, it, it stays in the car. Yeah, it, it's just... It's the emergency it's an emerg- kit. an emergency kit. And so, you know, as, as we're sitting here talking, I'm thinking like, oh my God, you know, with the folks, you know, over, over vacation time, we, we typically get one night away where we just make it a date night Mm -hmm. and we get away and the folks watch the kids. But I'm thinking the last three, four years when we're on vacation, I don't think we've had sex. Have we last year? I don't think we did. 
I know last year we didn't, but that um, was because I had my period. Okay. Okay, so that would... Really? Okay. Yeah. The the year before was Mammoth. 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 Yeah. Okay. Keep in mind, in Mammoth, we had Abby sleeping in the closet right off our bedroom. Okay. And she wasn't sleeping well. Right. <laughs> so, so we had her in a bed with us. Yeah. So I don't think... <laughs> Right. It so was a very large closet, so I don't want anybody to be worried. I mean, it was, well, it was the size no, of like a small bed, well, bathroom. Right. It didn't even have a door on it. Yeah. They, they know we're not like. I, I'm just, but it's kind of a funny thing to hear that we had her sleeping in a closet. Well, I, yeah. Um, um, and then the, the two, two years, years in Tahoe. I don't think we did either. Uh, Tahoe, Tahoe, Tahoe. Well, yeah, probably not because the first year in Tahoe, we had Alex in a crib in our room. Mm. And the second year in Tahoe, I was seven months pregnant. Mm. Okay, so so chances are good that we have not had sex on any of our vacations. Vacations, right? <laughs> and and this is a year that, you know, last year when we went, that was just the start of our intimacy lifestyle. We had just no, we hadn't. We even hadn't even started, started yet. It yet. We hadn't. So this is the first year where we're actually going into. Our intimacy lifestyle. I have to tell you, your timing's bad. I wonder if it's it's not going to happen again. It's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, it's taken care of. <sighs> Gotta love being regular. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. But, okay. But here's something really cool, though. It, it, I don't know if you guys are catching this conversation that Elise and I are having together. And, and we hope that... Uh, this is a fun time for us. To, to podcast to you guys is awesome. And it's one of those times where Elisa and I really just to get to sit down and talk. Mm -hmm. And I hope you guys are catching that because if it helps for you guys to have conversation like Elisa and I are, go go grab some microphones, go grab some headphones (laughs) and talk to each other. But the, the conversation we're having is, you know, one that we needed to have. And maybe you need to have in your marriage Mm -hmm. talking about this summer and what needs to happen so you can make intimacy a priority and intentional. And maybe, you know, when you start thinking about intimacy lifestyle, like lifestyle is like, oh, that sounds like a really, really big word. Maybe you take it in a much smaller chunk. Say, how are we going to make intimacy a priority this summer? What can we do? I mean, our kids are going to be back in school in two months. Um, what can we do for this two month period to say, you know, we want it. We kind of want to try this into, you know, Lisa and Tony keep talking about this intimacy lifestyle and how they have sex twice a week. And oh my gosh, you know, wouldn't that be great? But I don't know if we can handle that. Try it. Try it for mm-hmm. two months. See what a difference it makes in your marriage. You know, Mm -hmm. recognizing the fact that you're not locked into anything. I mean, we're not locked into anything. We still have a lot of flexibility in terms of, you know, how things work in our relationship. But Tony's right. I mean, these are the conversations that we sit down and we have. Mm -hmm. Say, you know what? Are we going to have, (laughs) are we going to have another summer vacation where the timing is bad and we're not having, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that, that actually lowers the expectation because Tony's not going to be like, ooh, wonder if we're having right. sex. And then when the reality is, no, we're not, you know, if I haven't told him, then his expectation and his reality are going to be vastly different and that's going to lead to disappointment. Right. Whereas now that he knows that the timing's going to be bad, he can still be disappointed. I'm not dis. No, I wouldn't be dis. I'm not disappointed because it, it, it's been discussed and it's, it's a non-issue at this point. Okay. There's no disappointment there. Why would there be? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's sort of like, oh, what am I going to do? Right. I mean, I, yeah. It, it's one Biologically, of those, there's nothing you can do. Right. So. You know what I mean? So it's like, eh, walk. But, but you know, I've given him a month's notice <laughs> that the timing's going to be bad for him. And so, you know, he's got time to adjust to that reality. So when expectations and reality are the same, then you don't have that disappointment. You know, if he's saying, you know, because he knows now, so low expectation, he knows what his reality is going to be. I'm confused. Where the heck are you going? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, you're losing me here tonight. Having the conversations allows realistic expectations. Yes. 
Oh, you're at, be, because yes. we're having the conversation on what's going on this summer. You know, the fact that the kids are home most every day means we're not having sex during the day. So we we have a lower expectation of having sex during the day because we know what our reality is. Yes. And so what I'm saying is that by having these conversations and discussing what our expectations and what our reality realities are going to be, we're going to be more content because we know we've discussed these issues. Right. And so it's not going to be like, well, you didn't tell me. Right. You know, I thought we were going to have sex on our vacation and <laughs> great. You know, that's not going to happen. Thanks. Would have been nice to know. Right. Yeah. And not, not that you ever take that tone of voice with me, but it's usually my tone of voice with you. Um, but it's, it's important. And that's what we're trying to convey to you guys that whatever intimacy lifestyle is going to take on for you, you need to have the conversation. Mm-hmm. One of you can't decide what that intimacy lifestyle is going to be and not share it with your spouse mm-hmm. because it's not going to work. Well, both parties need to be involved for sure because when you do it more than just say a week's time and we know that a number of you made mention that you didn't tell your spouse and you just served your spouse during that week and that is really cool. I mean, that is that is awesome for you to just lay yourself out there like that mm-hmm. and take a possible rejection you know if your spouse doesn't know so they may say one night they're tired or whatever but to do that over a course of a week is completely doable and possible if you want to sustain that long term there's no way you're going to be able to do that without bringing in your spouse and discussing it and especially during this the the summer months when again the, the schedules are a bit crazier, they're hectic, and you have kids up later or earlier, teenagers, um, you know, those of you have who had college students leave and are now back for the summer months. Right. You know, right. Uh, you know, at least I know that we, we did that over the years when we were, when we Actually, were in college. I didn't. You never did? I, I never did went it. home for a summer. Oh, wow. I did. I think only one, but I did. <laughs> But, you know, there's there's just things that change. And, and Elisa's right. You, you know, when we come up during the school year, we do have time set aside at least one morning a week where we just hang out. Um, and it's it's beautiful. It's fun. It's just it's a nice day that a nice morning that we have here at home. Mm-hmm. Just peace and quiet. Just us. And now that it's summertime, it is more difficult for us to have that time together. So we are having to get creative. Yes. And just like today, you know, I did the little I love you because, and then I had some time where I had to work on some stuff. So I was chilling at Starbucks. I text you just going, hey, what do we got going on tonight? No, that's not what you said. What did I say? You said... Oh, you're checking your phone, all right? Oh, oh, I've got it right here. Okay. Hold on. It was something... What did I say? That you I, said... Oh. What did I say? You said, business time tonight after podcasting. There you go. That's what I said. Well, now you got to tell me about business time. Business time is a song by the Concords. Is it, is it Concords or Flight of the Concords? Flight of the Concords. It's a great... It's a, Google it. We've had it up on our Facebook fan page. Well, why don't we just put it at the links? Okay, we'll, we'll do that. We'll put it as we'll one save of the links. It. Yeah, it's a great, it. it's a great little video with these guys, the flock of the Concords. And so I just, it, it, it for some reason, just popped in my head. It's one, of, it's one of those um, <laughs> code words. <laughs> yes, it's very easy to say business time and know exactly what he's talking about. And every once in a while, I, you know, depending on where I am, I do hand the phone to Alex to read the message if I, you know, I'm driving because, you know, here in California, you're not supposed to. Use your phone while you're driving. In, in many states. Well, I'm just, I can only speak for California. I know. And so, you know, if Alex were to read something like business time tonight after podcasting, that's a perfectly safe message. Yes. For him to be reading. It is. <laughs> so, but I know. Code it's, words are good. Code words are good. Yeah we've, yeah, we've had all kinds of code words over the years. Dude, we're all over the place tonight. We are. <laughs> I think it's because we're settling into summer. Uh, possibly. I don't know. All right. 
So code words, texting, sex Getting during creative. summer, creative. Making time. Prioritizing. Making it intentional. Man, it's a lot of good stuff. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think so. I hope they think so too. <laughs> a lot of it's a lot of good stuff to uh to work on this summer communicating it, it, a big a big one is Annalisa and I really have a heart for the intimacy lifestyle and we want to we want to get as many of you on board with us as we can because it makes a difference we know it does and we just haven't seen I guess what we expected in people going, yeah, I'm jumping on this. You know, I was hoping personally to see from after the seven days of sex challenge to see folks wanting to do it more. I think, I think that's probably going to be a long-term thing. I don't think you're going to see it right away. Partly because we didn't make that decision right away. No, but we've been talking about it for a while. We have been talking about, but you, you, I mean, think about it for most of our, our listeners and most of the couples that participated in the, in the challenge, that was the first time probably outside of their honeymoon. If they even did that on their honeymoon, that they had sex for that many days in a row right? where it wasn't just about having sex. It was really about building the intimacy and fostering the intimacy in their marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I I think it's going to, I think there are going to be a lot of couples and there may already be those couples and we just haven't heard from them. Right that are making that decision that, you know what, this works. Mm -hmm. I mean, we definitely heard from a lot of you that you saw results in seven days. Right. I feel like an infomercial here. You too can have results in just seven short days. Um, But you can. But you can, and you did. And so I I don't think there are too many of you that want to give that up. I, I would... I would hope that what you got out of that seven days is something that you want to continue in your marriages. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, you know, we're going back to the communication and how, how does an intimacy lifestyle, what does that look like in your marriage? You know, through all seasons of life, through all seasons, you know, and, and the communication part, you know, I know we sound like a broken record tonight about the communication, but you need to have those conversations. Because there are going to be times in your life where, you know, the twice a week alternating days thing works for you. There are going to be times where, you know, you're going to have to re- renegotiate that, re- dis- revisit that. Mm-hmm. And if you make it a priority to have an intimacy lifestyle, knowing what the benefits are going to be, you're going to, you're going to be able to have those conversations. And it's not going to be like, oh, we have to have the sex talk. save that for the teenagers um it's gonna be like you know what we just need to talk you know because there's this going on you know something's going on at work or you know obviously you know we've made mention before that we're in san diego lots of military families they (laughs) have lots to go with in terms of renegotiating Mm -hmm. their intimacy you know obviously there are deployments and things like that where they have to work on different aspects of their intimacy right Um, yeah we got to talk to a couple this past weekend yeah you know, and so the communication part and, and opening up the dialogue on intimacy, a lot of couples, you guys know from the comments that we've had over the last, you know, four or five months, a lot of couples don't really dig into this. Mm-hmm. And for some of you, what we say and what we talk about week in and week out really challenges what you, what you think about intimacy in your marriage how you think about intimacy in your marriage. And I I will have to say it sometimes comes to the point where you got to be in prayer and then the rubber has to hit the ground. It just, you you need to take that step of faith and make it happen. So if what we're saying about the intimacy lifestyle is falling on your heart and you're going, wow, this is something I want to do, but you haven't brought it up to your spouse it's time to step out in faith and start talking because one thing that I learned a long time ago, if I didn't open my mouth and say, Elisa, let's have sex for 60 days straight. We wouldn't be here today. And you know what? I thank God, not every day, (laughs) 
but I thank God a lot <laughs> for giving me the strength to to do that. And I was scared. I I was very nervous bringing that up because of the rejection I knew was going to be right behind my question. But sometimes you got to just go do it. And you got to just step out in faith and just know that God's right there beside you. And he wants you to have this intimate relationship with your spouse. And I mean, I'm, I'm asking you guys to do it, to pray and to step out on faith and and do this and have this type of a conversation with your spouse. So I have to ask the question, why are you not thankful every day? Why am I not thankful every day? I'm just saying I don't sit here to God and go, geez, God, thank you very much for Elisa saying yes to having sex every day for oh, six okay. days. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I, just I, I, don't, like, I don't thank God for <laughs> What do you mean by you that? saying yes. Okay. Just, just, <laughs> no, check, just checking because oh, I was I'm, kind of, I'm like, where's he no, going? No, no, I'm, I'm thankful every day for the the marriage that we now have, the the intimacy we have, the communication, the the ability to work through our issues and problems very quickly and succinctly and dissipate them so they do not last longer than gosh maybe a couple of hours mm-hmm. i mean that has come a long way oh yeah i mean i i had an instance tonight where you got you and alex were out here on the computer and i'd asked you to come in and because it was just getting the kids and you were like Alex came in and was already in the shower. I'm like, where the heck is Tony? <laughs> and then he comes in and, and the first thing he does when he walks in the door is goes to his phone, which is, you guys know how I feel about his phone. And, uh, I'm like, what are you doing? And I, I had two choices right there. I could have gotten really, really cranky about the fact that somehow his seven year old son could make it in the house faster than he can. And that the first thing he was doing was going on his phone. And I just kind of, I kind of laughed about it because I said, you know what? We're, ha- we're, we're having business time tonight. Right. And is well, it really well, worth it? And, and, and on the other yeah. side is I'm reading to Alex and Abby is having a knip fit <laughs> in her room, screaming at the top of her lungs. <laughs> and and I walk in there and, and you have your arms crossed and she's crying because you won't read to her because she's had fits. And so once I had Alex down, I came into her room and I told you to exit, <laughs> remove yourself. And you were just, no, she's not getting books because I this and this and this and that. <laughs> and I just kept telling you to remove yourself from the room so I could just take care of this. And that way we could get out here and podcast. But more importantly, so that tonight you and I could just have some nice quiet time, downtime together and and just engage each other. Right. And so, but at that moment too, it's one of those things that I could have held this grudge because I had to go in Mm -hmm. and take care of Abby and this, that, and the other, and you're not doing what you should be doing as a mom and rah, 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 rah. And really, I don't even see it like that. I see that we're on the same team and the problem was Abby and not you nor I, but Abby was just very tired and she needed a change. Of parent. Of parent. Yes. And what that boils down to is we've made each other the focus. And so by doing that, we don't let the little things become big things. Which then allows us to be intimate. It's kind of one of those crazy chicken and the egg scenarios. It is. Um, well, we're going to wrap up our ramblings for this evening. Yeah, we, we've been rambling tonight. And, you know, it's just what it is. It's summertime. We're letting it loose a little bit hanging out and enjoying it. But we have some amazing news. Some very, very exciting news. We've only been talking about this for the last nine months. No, No, we haven't. (laughs)